Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm really happy to have you here with me today. We have a ton going on in the kitchen today. I can hear my freeze dryer down in the basement beeping at me. So we're going to go take the herbs out of there that we put in yesterday and get those jarred up. I am going to be making some beans. Over there in the sink there, you can see I have a sink full of navy beans and we are going to turn those into pork and beans. I've already chopped up some onions to add along with some of, um, well, this is bacon ends. So when I cut my bacon up, there's always some chunks on the end that aren't good for shaving into nice thin pieces. So I've chopped those up and I'm going to add those into the pork and beans. So we'll walk through that process with you. I also have my canner full right now with some kidney beans that I have been running through the canner since yesterday. So I have this batch that's already done that we took out of the canner yesterday, that batch that's full, and then another one to go in to the canner in a little bit. But I think what we're going to do first is run through the pork and beans and get those all put together. So what I'm actually using today is some canned tomato sauce that I have had sitting down in my pantry for a couple of years now and it needs to get used up. So I'm going to use that for the base for the pork and beans. With the beans that I have in the sink over there, um, they are navy beans and I soaked those for 24 hours and I just cooked them for 30 minutes. And that is the standard practice that I use for canning any sort of bean at all. I find that it makes the best finished product and if you wanna hear more information about my thoughts on that, you can go over to Instagram and look at the highlight that's called beans, or you can check out my last video and I'll put a link for that down in the show notes for you. I also have a bowl full of soaked navy beans that have to get through today. So there's gonna be a lot of bean canning happening today, along with some chickpeas. So the chickpeas I use for hummus and the black beans I usually use for rice and bean wraps. So let's head down to the freeze dryer room and grab our freeze dried herbs. I have another batch of stuff to put into the freeze dryer as well. So I am just venting the freeze dryer with the vent down there. I have a bucket to catch all of the water as it defrosts. I am warming the trays up before I bring them out and that stops condensation from forming on these frozen trays and then getting moisture into our freeze dried product. What I have in here right now is, what do I have in here? Parsley, all four of these trays are parsley. And I have a couple of trays, more of the herbs that we harvested yesterday, along with broccoli and cauliflower. This is the first time I've ever freeze dried broccoli and cauliflower but I'm hoping it's gonna work really well for adding into soup in the winter time. So I'm just gonna reuse the pot that I used for cooking my beans in, and I'm going to dump in this in, actually, you know what? No, I'm not gonna do that. First, I'm going to fry up the onions in this pot just because the taste of fried onions is superior to that of raw onions cooked in sauce, at least I think so. So we'll add that in there and a little splash of olive oil. I will link the recipe that inspired what I'm going to do here today down in the show notes for you if you wanna check it out and try it yourself. This recipe does call for brown sugar, which I currently don't have, so I'm going to be adding some molasses to it along with some organic evaporated cane sugar. The other things that I'm going to add in here are some prepared mustard, a little bit of chili powder, and a little bit of garlic powder. So we're gonna keep this very simple. Because I haven't done it before, I prefer to start with a simpler recipe and then get more elaborate as I gain more experience. All right, let's get our jars out of our canner here. And since this canner literally just cooled off, I am going to use a glove to pull this weight off because it's very hot. We're down to zero here, so we can safely open up the counter. Little bit of chili powder, not a ton, because I don't want it to taste like barbecue sauce. Little bit of garlic powder and stir this up and then we'll cook it up and taste it. See if there's anything else we need to add. And around a quarter cup 
of sugar. Just about forgot to add that. Okay, my freeze dryer is beeping at me, so I'll go grab those herbs. This is parsley, and I don't want to blend it up. If you remember back when I did the basil, um, the sage, and the garlic scapes, I put them through the food processor and blended them up to make them quite fine. But I don't want to do that with these. I don't mind if they get crushed down a little bit, but I do want them to still hold some of their shape. So I'm just going to store them in jars here. I'm not sure if I'm going to need two of them or not, but I'll have an extra one here for good measure. So I was able to fit two trays per quart jar. Look at the color of these. Look just like they did when I put them in. Okay, so the sauce is done. I'm gonna put in a little bit of the tomato sauce, a chunk of the pork, and then top it off the rest of the way with the beans. And the rest of the way up with water, leaving an inch of headspace. It does smell good, doesn't it? I have enough here to do another batch of these, which is fantastic. They taste really good. So hopefully they'll taste good once they've been canned. So now we are gonna stop and take a lunch break while the pressure canner is going because the pressure canner is really noisy and it's very difficult to film with that noise in the background. But I'll be back with you again soon. All right, friends, let me show you. We have our first batch of beans out. We have another batch of kidney beans. I just put the next batch of uh, pork and beans in the pressure canner. And I have one more batch of kidney beans that I just jarred up that I'll put in after that's done. And then we need to get all of these black beans done. And the chickpeas. And I picked pretty much the worst day in the world to can. Let me show you why. So a couple of days ago, fires broke out all over BC. And this is what we're dealing with today. So the smoke is so thick and we actually have ashes. I'm not sure if you can see them falling from the sky. Not good, not good at all. So that means that our house is all closed up with fans and air purifiers going on inside and it's closed up. <laughs> so there is no fresh air circulating throughout my house at all. So I have been thinking about trying my burner that I have out here that I usually do water bath canning on in the summertime with my pressure canner. It is really hard to keep the temperature regulated on one of those stoves, so I don't think it's gonna work. I think what I'm going to do is finish up the beans in, that I have um, done right now uh, over the next, like I'll probably be canning until like two o'clock in the morning or something like that. And then not do any more pressure canning again until the smoke clears and we can open the house back up again. Maybe I'll just do some water bath canning and I can do that outside. So the plan right now is well, this next batch is going and Dan and I are gonna head over to the little cabin over here because we can be indoors there and and do a little bit of work in there. We're really hoping that the smoke clears out a little bit because we were planning on going to 
the lake this afternoon, but if the smoke doesn't clear up, then that's not gonna happen. Oh my goodness, it is so humid and stuffy in here. Oh my gosh, it's brutal. It's really awful. It's really awful, oh my gosh. I'm so sorry, I did not plan that very well at all. But to be fair, I didn't know it was gonna be smoky this morning. It um, has been smoky off and on for the last couple of days, but it cleared out last night. It was actually really beautiful. Dan and I were just talking about um, getting our fire suppression tank. I've shown that on our channel before. We have a big giant tank that we have hooked up to a fire pump, like a fire hose pump, and we don't have it filled up. And I think now is a very good time to do that. So that'll be a project for the next couple of days. Good grief, I haven't seen smoke like this since 2017 when we had those fires I was mentioning earlier. Did I mention it earlier? I don't know if I did. Anyway, we had fires all around us in 2017 and this, yeah, I haven't seen smoke this bad since, since then. One of the things about smoke like this is it does impact plant growth because the sun's not getting through the um, smoke. So that's too bad because I was really looking forward to all of that heat that we were supposed to get, be getting. It's still pretty warm, but all of the heat in the sun to help grow all of my squash plants that got stunted by the cold spring. But if this is going to stick around for a while, I don't think that's going to happen. We're not that much further in the cabin than we were last time I showed you. But for those of you that are new here, this cabin was built in the 1960s and we and it was basically just a shell. Um, and we are going to get it completely finished and use it for company. We eventually want to do an Airbnb here. So that's the goal with this cabin. Thank goodness it is not hot in here. So my job is going to be to insulate the cabin. And then Dan is going to be putting in these little shims that I was sharing with you in the last video because all of the wood in this building was milled on the property and nothing is exactly the same. So we have to use some shims before we put the drywall on to go find some gloves. Oh, good news, honey. So this is the day after I shared with you that she had a mild mastitis infection on one of her teeth. Was looking way better this morning and her teeth was looking less inflamed and she still has a little bit of mastitis in there. That's gonna take a few days to um, work its way through, but she was much happier and that made me so much happier. I always feel bad for the animals when it's so smoky like this because there's nothing really we can do about it. They seem completely unfazed <laughs> by it. The chickens are all out. Everybody's out. They're not trying to hide in the chicken coop or anything, but still it makes me feel horrible being outside and this smoke. So I imagine they must not feel super great about it either. Oh, where am I going? I'm supposed to be going in the shop, but distracted. Okay, gloves found. When I was little, so probably four or five years old, my parents were doing some sort of renovation and they had pink insulation. And my dad had built us a tree fort outside and I had no idea that pink insulation was fiberglass, little tiny fiberglass bits. And so I got a bat of it and brought it into my tree fort and made a bed out of it. <laughs> so I can still remember to this day how itchy my entire body was. It was horrible. Okay, so I got as much of the insulation done in there as I could, but like I said, it's not built square at all. <coughs> Excuse me. And there are some um, areas where we need larger insulation to fit. So at least I did all of the ones where the smaller insulation that we got could fit. So hoping to be able to finish that up, we'll have to go to town tomorrow, get the rest of the insulation and then, um, what was I gonna say? And then uh, get the rest of it done. I think the smoke is getting to me. 
Okay, we are actually on to day two of this video and all of the canning of the beans is done. We ended up with 52 quarts of beans and I thought what we could do is give the pork and beans a try. Open them up and give them a taste so that I can let you know if this recipe is a good one. So let's crack open a jar. And I am not going to heat this up, although of course that would change the flavor of them quite a bit. They smell really good. They smell just like pork and beans. Absolutely delicious. Super fabulous. Really, really good. My kids are going to love this heated up on buttered toast with some grated cheddar cheese on top. So I'm just gonna pop this one back in the fridge and I'm sure somebody will eat it up by the end of today. That's really exciting. Honestly, it does not taste very different at all to store-bought pork and beans. The only thing I think I would tweak a little bit is put a little bit more molasses in there and maybe a little bit more water than sauce so that it was a little bit um, like runnier, the sauce, not quite so thick, but really excellent flavor. So you probably can notice over here that I have six boxes of blueberries, which we ended up picking up this morning when we ran to town. So I am going to have to process all these blueberries. I went down to the pantry this morning to see where we were at as far as syrup and jams from last year. And I actually have a ton. I don't know why, but last year I canned an excessive amount of syrups and jams. So I think what I'm going to do is freeze dry a bunch of these because the other thing that I'm lacking in right now, like I mentioned earlier, is freezer space. I think what I'm going to do with the majority of these blueberries is actually freeze dry them. So I'm just gonna wash them, put them back in these boxes and throw the boxes right into the freezer. And as I have room in my freeze dryer, I'm just going to run them through my freeze dryer. So one of the things about freeze drying blueberries that I've learned through my research is that you do actually have to poke a hole in every single one so that there is an easy escape for all of that moisture. Otherwise they take forever in the freeze dryer. So let's think this through what the best strategy is for this. I think maybe what I'll do is get them all washed and put out on trays and pricked with a needle and then thrown back into the freezer again. And then as I have room in my freeze dryer, I will run them through because within a few days, all of our freezers are packed full right now and we're butchering all our chickens next week, which means that we'll every square inch of our Freezers are gonna be taken up, so I'll have to get these through the freeze dryer or in, out of the freezer and into the freeze dryer before we do that chicken butchering. So the last thing that I have to do with the canning is remove all the rings off of all of my jars. So the reason that you wanna remove your ring is number one, it's not necessary. It's not actually holding down the lid anymore. The seal, the air suction is actually what's holding it down. So it's not required for that. But this is particularly true with pressure canning. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of siphoning and some stuff will come over the top of the jar and create kind of a sticky mess here. So removing your ring and then washing your jar really well before it goes into storage is a good idea. And it also gives you an opportunity to check your seals on all your jars and make sure that they're good before they go into your pantry. So that's something I need to do is get all my rings off, wash all my jars, get them put onto the pantry shelves, which is something that I actually enjoy doing because it's fun to watch the pantry fill back up again. I have to start getting pretty strategical about my um, planning when it comes to processing this time of year because there's so much coming in and a lot of the things um, that I'm preserving are perishable, of course, and if I leave them sitting on the counter for even a couple of days, especially in the heat, they can turn. So. I, uh, I start feeling a little bit overwhelmed usually by the end of July because it's just like nonstop stuff coming out of the garden. Um, and because there are a lot of things that we don't grow here that we end up having to get from farms south of us, blueberries being one of them, we end up buying large batches at a time and then I have to get all that stuff processed. Fortunately, these blueberries do freeze nicely and I can preserve them after they've been frozen. 
especially be the ones that are going into the freeze dryer. So that's kind of nice compared to sometimes when I buy things like peaches bulk and I need to do like several hundred pounds of peaches all at once. Okay, so I'm just gonna try this out because I've not done this before. Take my blueberries first off. I'm curious to see how many are actually gonna fit on a tray because from what I understand with blueberries, you really need to keep them only one layer thick on the tray. Oh my goodness, that's not gonna be very much. Maybe my whole plan of freeze drying all of these is not really a good one. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so I have them laid out there. We'll see how long it takes me to actually poke holes in one whole entire tray. One of my daughters does beadwork and she has these really long beading needles, which is gonna make it a little bit easier than just a small little needle. So I'm just gonna find a lighter and disinfect this. Okay, that only took a couple minutes. It wasn't too time consuming, a little bit tedious maybe, but not undoable. So I'm just gonna pop this one right in the freezer. You know, this time of year, I think it would actually be worthwhile for me to buy another set of trays. So I have two sets of trays for my Harvest Right medium size freeze dryer. It fits four trays so that I can always have a new one prepared to go into the freeze dryer when the freeze dryer is finished. But this time of year, it might not hurt to have another set. Oh, I wanted to show you over here. We're just about finished the spot for the fridge here. So we put the shiplap on the back. I've just siliconed it all and I just have to paint it up. And then we have trim to go across the top of the um, cabinets all the way across. And then we're just going to repaint them white again and get the fridge put back there. A couple of people have mentioned that they actually like the fridge over here, but it blocks a lot of the light from the window. And I am someone who really appreciates a lot of light. So it's going to go back over here again so I can have that light coming into the kitchen from over there. Now we need to go Pick a few more herbs from the garden and we'll pop in on Dan and see how he's doing. It feels good to have things moving ahead again on the farm. We didn't do much here at all over the month of June and it feels good to kind of be getting back into a regular rhythm again. So, um, I have scissors. I actually brought some scissors and put them out in my greenhouse. So as long as I can remember to put them back in the greenhouse when I'm done harvesting, I won't have to keep running around my house trying to find scissors every time I go out to my garden. Someone suggested getting a pair of scissors and actually putting them on a loop on my harvesting basket. And that is something that I think I might do because it's a really smart idea. It is pretty smoky here again right now, but not nearly as it bad as it was yesterday afternoon when we were out here together. It was awful. Um, I can't really smell the smoke. I don't know if I'm just used to it now at this point, but I can't really smell it today. He's putting the window in. He just had to do some framing on it so that it was all framed properly to code. How's it going? All right, good. Oh, I have some really good news to report. When I went to milk honey this morning, her mastitis was completely cleared up, which is fabulous. She's so much more comfortable and happy. So I'm gonna give her a couple more days of milking and dumping. And usually what I mean by that is if the milk isn't bad, but there's just still lots of colostrum in it, then I will give it to the pigs. So we'll go a couple more days of dumping the milk uh, before we start bringing it into the house. So weird thing, <laughs> almost every day I come down and my ladder here where I usually have flowers on is tipped over. So this morning it was tipped over this way and yesterday morning it was tipped over that way and that's the flowers <laughs> that had fallen off from the top of it. And I cannot for the life of me figure out what the heck is tipping it over? Is something trying to climb up it? There's no other trace of anything. And I certainly don't think the wind could do that. 
I mean, I guess that's possible, but I don't think so. Okay, so what herbs should we grab? Um, ah, you know what? I think we'll grab this oregano since it is just about to flower. So we'll grab a bunch of that. Some chickweed growing up in here. Chickweed is totally edible, but also a pain in the bud because it's invasive and gets in everywhere. Okay, I have another patch of oregano over that away. So we'll go grab some more over there. For those of you that have experience with straw flowers, when is it the best time to harvest them? I just want to have them for dried, fl dried um, flowers for the winter time, but I, I don't know because I don't have any experience with them. Do a little deadheading on our snapdragons because we want them to keep blooming all summer. Gotta watch for the bumblebees in here because the bumblebees go right inside of the snapdragon. <laughs> so cute. Something I absolutely have to do, maybe I'll do it today while the smoke isn't too terribly bad, is get, on, get into the high tunnel. Bless you! <sighs> He's sneezing a lot from all the smoke, but um, get into the high tunnel and get those tomatoes trellised because I went in to turn on the drip irrigation this morning and it's just getting more extreme by the second. But I was very encouraged because I was looking at pictures from this time last year and my um, high tunnel, as far as the amount of actual green growth that's on my tomatoes is actually doing better than last year. Tomato wise, not so much, but that was really encouraging to see. Just going to take a quick peek on the broccoli over here because it's really starting to head up. I feel like I can give it one more day before we need to do the really big harvest. My goodness, this is a gorgeous broccoli year. <laughs> this makes me very happy because last year wasn't a very good broccoli year, so this is very exciting. Oh, I'm super excited about this because all of this here is cauliflower. So the cauliflower that I planted down at the bottom of the garden, that is coming on right now and I'm starting to harvest it now. And I was a little bit disappointed just because I don't have a ton down there, but I forgot that I had planted this entire section with cauliflower and it's just starting to develop baby heads right now. So that's really exciting. <sighs> Somebody was asking me in the comment section um, whether or not I just come down to the garden sometimes and just lay and enjoy how incredibly beautiful it is and all the sounds of nature. So I told her yesterday when I was replying to her comment that I was gonna do that. So I think I might just take a couple minutes right now and lay down and just take it all in for a minute. One of the things that I was talking about today on my Instagram stories is how easy it is to take for granted what's around you or just get so busy with life that you forget to stop and just take a minute. So I've been trying to do that lately and I think I'm gonna do that right now. So let's just take a little minute to lay down here and have a little moment. <laughs> The ground is a little bit wet, but that's all right. You know what one of the things is about this kind of life that I have noticed is because when you have a farm, there's always something to do. Like it, even when I was laying here, I was thinking about all the things that I had to get done today. And it was hard for me to just stay still and turn my mind off and enjoy the beautiful sounds of the bumblebees and the birds and down working in the background and the gorgeousness of these flowers behind me. Um, because that my mind is always full of all of those jobs and tasks and to-do lists and stuff like that. It is something that you have to be 
at least I find compared to when I, when I lived in town, I have to be a lot more deliberate about making time for just enjoying life um, than, I, than I used to have to, just because every minute could be filled with work here. And because I'm somebody who really does enjoy working a lot, I, um, I just have to guard against working too much sometimes and learn how to take a minute. We're, we're doing this thing right now, just kind of in acknowledgement of how busy life is, especially at this time of year, where we're going to the lake every single day, rain or shine, and we're going swimming together as a family. And we just started yesterday and it was so much fun. And at the end of those two weeks of going swimming every day, we are going to go to the movies. And then one of the other things that we're doing is doing some kind of family adventure of some sort, at least once a week, where we go out and just, we have one planned on Sunday where we're gonna be going out for a big hike to this place that we have been wanting to go for years and years and years. So we're just trying to be a little bit more deliberate with our time and making sure that we're taking time to just do fun stuff. I think that's really important in life in general, but it is definitely important where, where you live is also your work, your workplace. It's hard to separate those two things. So I am actually going to, where is the cabin? There it is. I am going to uh, go out and do all the insulating because Dan's busy putting in the windows and getting the rest of the framing that he needed to get done. done. So I will have to show you that in the next video. I hope that you enjoyed today's video, everybody, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.